The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. But I say to you that here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. The Gospel of the Lord. If the saints were not central to the Christian faith, and if active and living communion with them not obligatory upon all Christians, then we would not, in the baptismal creed of the church called the Apostles' Creed, proclaim a belief in the communion of the saints. But the fact of the matter is, is that we do proclaim our belief in the communion of the saints at our baptism. And the church professes her belief in the communion of the saints every morning at matins and every evening at evensong, and as well as other hours of every day. Any feast, furthermore, that shows up in the creeds of the church is by definition a major feast that carries in it something obligatory about the faith. For example, we find in the creeds easily Christmas, we find in the creeds Holy Week and Easter, we find in the creeds Ascension, Christ the King, Pentecost, and we find, of course, all saints in the creeds. Now this should not at all be surprising, 
because it was through the communion of saints, after all, that the church of Jesus Christ was first born. 120 saints were gathered in the upper room, told to go there by Jesus Christ to await the promise of the Father, the coming of the Holy Ghost. Told to go there after, right before Jesus ascended and wait for nine days until Pentecost. This was the first church. Gathered in the upper room for nine days were all stars of the faith. Blessed Mary, whom the church quickly saw as mother of the church, along with other holy women. Mary Magdalene, her sister Martha, Mary the wife of Clopas, perhaps even Peter's mother-in-law. Along, of course, with the eleven men singled out by Jesus for a particular task, soon to be joined by Matthias, taking over for Judas. It was from and through this communion of saints, this gathering of saints, this fellowship of saints, all of whom were apostles because apostle means someone sent, and each saint in the upper room, both male and female, were sent there by Jesus Christ, as I said, to wait for the Holy Ghost, and in a more general sense were sent by Christ to proclaim to the nations the truth that can only be found in him. It was through this all-star communion of saints their daily prayer, their breaking of bread, and their fellowship, and their teaching, that the church came to be by God's action through them. And so from the first, we see that God acts through his saints. God reveals himself through his saints. God brings about that which is new through his saints. And God transforms the world through his saints. Well, how does this happen? It happens because the saints are those people who, in the words of St. Paul, have, their, have the eyes of their hearts enlightened by God. They have the eyes of their hearts enlightened by God, St. Paul teaches, so that persons who receive such grace know what is the hope to which God has called us. You need to have, in other words, the eyes of your heart enlightened by God to truly understand the hope to which he has called you and me, according to his great might which he accomplished in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at the right hand in the heavenly places. It's a glorious passage from St. Paul. I encourage you this week to take home your leaflet and just sit with this passage from Ephesians. But it starts, St. Paul insists, with the enlightenment of the eyes of the heart. God accomplishes his mission through those whose heart has enlightened eyes. Not eyes that do not see God in the world, but rather eyes that see God in the world through all things good, beautiful, and true. Not eyes that are impatient with the world, impatient with the people in the world, but rather eyes that see God in them. Eyes that have patience and humility that look for him even when he might be hard to find. Not eyes that do nothing but judge others for their sins and for their inadequacies, but rather eyes that see Jesus in the face of every person they meet. Not eyes of suspicion, 
but eyes of love. Indeed, enlightened eyes of the heart means the eyes of Jesus. The eyes of his sacred humanity. How he looked upon the world and the things and people of the world. Eyes of compassion. Eyes of mercy. Eyes that forgive. Seven times seven times seventy thousand times a day if necessary. Eyes through which grace in its fullness can be found. Because such eyes of the heart is Christ in us. He wants to give us those eyes if we accept the gift that he wants to give. Brothers and sisters, all of this is biblical Christianity. And this is why churches such as ours who seek to participate in historic sacramental Christianity usually take a saint as a patron of the parish. In our case, St. Paul. And in our sister congregation, all of the saints are the patrons of our two holy houses. And likewise, this is why God has led our parish to see St. Teresa of Calcutta as our patron of mission in Tazewell County. All saints are powerful examples of the gospel. She is a powerful example for us of how to embody the gospel as we encounter other people in our day-to-day -day lives. We are to be Christ to the world and to every person we meet, she teaches us. The greatest disease in the West today is being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for, she teaches us today. Help one person at a time, and always start with the person nearest you, she teaches us today. That teaching is the gospel, embodied by the saints, embodied by St. Teresa of Calcutta. And through that teaching, therefore, Christ acts in the world. Through that teaching by this saint, God reveals himself in the world. Through that teaching by this saint, God brings about that which is new. And through that teaching by this saint, who in her words captures what is fundamental about Christ's teaching to his church, through that teaching, God seeks to transform the world. And so let us be led, brothers and sisters, by this teaching. Led in our mission in Tazewell County.